At this point, you feel like you know and have played everything that Vanguard Zombies has to offer. But in this video, I'm going to be teaching you 10 secret tips and tricks that are going to instantly turn you into a 200 IQ player. Even if you think you know it all and you've played everything that the mode has to offer, trust me, you will learn something new in this video. So it's important that you watch it all the way through to the end to see what tips we have to share. And if you're new and enjoyed this video, be sure to subscribe for more videos like this. And I heard if you do, then you won't have nightmares of Ted the bus driver from transit. Jumping in with tip number one is how to technically get in infinite self revives. Now this will only really work if you're playing in solo, but if you go down during a timed objective like Blitz that you see here, you have 40 seconds to revive yourself in this down state. However, if you go down in Blitz with less than 30 seconds left on the timer, you can stay in the down state and not revive yourself until the timer runs out on Blitz. And when it does, you will automatically complete the objective and be revived and keep yourself revived. This is a very cheap technique, but you can use this to your advantage, especially in the later waves where it can be quite difficult. If you go down with less than 30 seconds to go, just stay down until the objective ends and you'll be revived for free. Second tip is you want to be working on packer punching your loadout weapon as soon as possible so you can deal the most damage early on. Don't be prioritizing buying perks and their upgraded tiers, but rather focus all your points solely going to that first packer punch. Once you've managed that, you just want to again be prioritizing getting points from each objective and saving that in order to to upgrade your weapon to at least second tier pack a punch at that point i'd recommend you then start buying some of the upgraded perks so you have enough points to upgrade your weapon to the third pack a punch tier at around wave 10. third tip in this video is going to be all around double points if you see a double points drop during an objective and you know you're about to finish the objective wait and grab it right at the end so that once you finish an objective that double points being active will give you double the essence that you'd normally get from completing an objective. And in the higher rounds, you're rewarded 10,000 points per objective. But if you have that double points active, you'll get 20,000 points. It's not often that you'll get this opportunity, but if you have one lying around, please keep that in mind and time it well so that you can make the most of getting double points from an objective. Tip number four is a little bit of a obvious one, but to some, it might not be so obvious. And this is with the altar of covenants. As you continue on playing through the game, you'll notice that the altar will start to change its flame color going to a purple and then to a orange gold color. This will let you know that you have an epic or legendary version of a covenant ability to purchase and in most cases it could be a upgraded version of one that you currently have which you can swap out for. Next tip goes along with the covenant tip we just showed you and if you're lucky enough with the random assortment of covenant abilities given to you you can run multiple ammo types if you wanted to such as brain rot and cryo freeze at the same time which you've never been able to do before inside of zombies. You've always been tied to just one alternate ammo type. If you're in co-op, it's definitely great if one player has an assortment of different alternate ammo types. That way, they're always going to have a zombie that's going to have some sort of effect applied to it fairly often. This next tip is going to come in extremely handy if at some point you wanted to change your field upgrade. Now, a lot of people that play Cold War Zombies will know about this trick, but if you wanted to change your loadout field upgrade at any point, simply just go to the menu, choose a different loadout or edit the loadout you're currently using and then edit the field upgrade and you'll be able to change field upgrades as many times as you want in game. But the one thing that changes compared to Cold War is that if you had a fully ready to go ring of fire and you swapped it for something else, in Cold War, you'd have to refill that charge. But in Vanguard, the charge is already full and it doesn't deplete no matter how many times you change the upgrade, it will be ready to go. So tip number seven, and this is going to be the most overpowered covenant ability you will see yet and enables you to essentially never ever reload your shotgun. There's a covenant ability in the game called Ammo Gremlin and the effect is that stowed weapons will refill ammo from stock automatically. Now this doesn't sound overly impressive but when you get the legendary version instead of it being just stowed weapons it's all weapons refill ammo from stock quickly. And combining it with a shotgun like the Eindhorn revolving or the combat shotgun with 
with such fast fire rates. We'll be pumping out shots so quick, but you'll notice that you will never have to reload because the shots will always constantly be going back into your clip. Now, you can, of course, use this with other weapons too, like ARs, LMGs, SMGs, you get the picture. But because of the shotguns and just how much ammo you have in them per clip, you'll just find that this is so much more useful with shotguns and will make your life a lot easier. So good, it almost feels like cheating inside of zombies. Like, this is the most overpowered Covenant I've ever seen. And I already thought that there was some other really overpowered ones already in the game. For the next tip, we'll be showing you an incredibly easy way to manipulate the zombies engine to make some certain objectives on higher rounds extremely easy. Now, once you get past round 15, the zombies are going to be incredibly quick. They're going to take a lot of health from you and you are a two hit kill when you have no armor. And for objectives like harvest, the high rounds are difficult for this, but we're going to make this a lot easier. As it currently stands right now, if you mantle onto an object where zombies have to climb up to get to you, it takes the zombies a really long time to actually mantle up and climb up to join you. It's during this long animation that you can start killing the zombies before they even have a chance to get to you. Most scenarios at this point, the zombies would have super sprinted to you, swiped you, and you'd be dead. But here, you're in control and can slow down the zombies so you can take them out with ease before they have a chance to mantle up and swipe you. But if you are trying to go for like round 100, round 200 in this game mode, this is the only way to do this with absolute ease to the point where this is not even a struggle. This becomes easy mode. This is also great for the blitz objective as well, because again, zombies are just going to have to climb up to get to you. And in the time it takes for them, you've already already take them out and it makes the game a lot easier. Now for our next tip, this is going to be how to cheese another objective. I've already shown you how to basically get self revives if you go down less than 30 seconds to go in blitz, but this is how to avoid killing some of the most annoying bosses in Vanguard Zombies during the harvest objective. Now in the later rounds, you are going to get a lot of Storm Kriegers, which are the zombie bosses with machine guns. However, every time you collect five rune stones and deposit them in into the Sin Eater, all the zombies that are currently spawned will despawn. And this includes those Storm Kriegers. So if you're on the final phase like I am, and it's proving to be a little bit of an issue, don't worry about it. Just focus on killing normal zombies and trying to get those rune stones to drop and deposit all of those. And then you don't have to waste any time trying to take out those Storm Kriegers. Definitely makes life a lot easier. For our next tip, it's going to be a secret hit spot on the Storm Krieger bosses, which you probably didn't realize. 99% of the time, you will be shooting these guys in the head as that is the most effective way to take them out. You can see those critical hit points appear when you shoot them in the head. But did you know that you can also shoot their backpack. They have explosive backpacks which you can get to if you time it correctly in between the end of their gunfire and the second or two that they pause before they start shooting again. It's quite tricky to get because every time you get behind them they immediately turn around and spot you. But if there are any dormant ones do shoot them in the back before they turn around and start shooting them in the head so that you can take them out quicker and have a chance of them exploding. Now if you've made it all the way to the end of this video which you obviously have then we have a bonus tip just for you that stuck around all right and and it's the overpowered shotgun loadout you've seen in this video. If it wasn't clear enough, the meta for Vanguard Zombies is exactly the same as Cold War and it's shotguns. But the one you want to run is the Einhorn Revolving. This is such an amazing shotgun. And once you have these attachments on it, pairing it up with that Ammo Gremlin Legendary Covenant is going to make the game so much easier. And this is the loadout right here. So for the muzzle, you want the M97 Full Choke, which you'll get pretty early on. You'll want the Carver foregrip as your underbarrel, but what changes this weapon into an incredible weapon is the 16 gauge seven round cylinder. Now you do need to get this to quite a high weapon level in order to get this, but trust me, this is what's gonna give you that 18 bullets and it's just gonna be absolutely incredible. Top that off with the sword off barrel, which is really good. Put that with the NIDAR Model 47 optic. Now, you don't need to have an optic, but obviously it will make you a little bit more accurate for those headshots, and it just looks great. The pine tar grip for the rear grip, and then Reisdorf folding for the stock. There are probably at least 10 more tips that I could have shared in this video. And if you have any that you want to share with the community, please let me know them in the comments below. Hopefully you learned something new in this video. And if you did, I'd love to know below. Be sure to leave a like rating if you enjoyed. You can find some more Vanguard Zombies videos on your screen right now. Click over to one of those and I'll be there to watch it with you in just a few moments.